Okay, Shalom Rastafari. Here's the Tavis Smiley um, website, PBS. He was watching the other night, and there was the actor, the actor activist Harry Belafonte. And this is the part two of his interview, and we were somewhat pleasantly surprised to see that Belafonte attributes his um, pro-blackness, Africanness, human rights to a connection with Ethiopia, Haile Selassie, Rastafari, Ja. Rastafari. So you can find this, hopefully you can find this on the internet at the Tavis uh, Smiley website. And this is just a clip from the part, from the part two. So let's see if we can roll this. To war. King said famously, as you know, the war is the enemy of the poor. Um, where we started our conversation last night talking about the poor. So the last time that you and I sat together for a television show, it was a special, you recall, that I was doing for PBS. We uh, sat together at Riverside. Yes. Uh, church in New York uh, for a one-hour special here on PBS about Dr. King's Beyond Vietnam speech. Um, it didn't occur to me to ask this question then, but after reading your text here, your memoir, it occurs to me to ask it now, which is how a guy who served in World War II, you were a military man, you didn't just play one on television, you were, in, in, the, in the movies, you were in fact a, an enlisted military uh, man. Um, how is it that you have over the years juxtapose your being a part of the military, fighting to defend this country in World War II, and being so unapologetically anti-war. In my youth, I saw the war as an instrument in the defense of something for which I held a great esteem. And uh, most of it was through the instruction of my mother, who was fiercely anti-racist. Uh, she she struggled against poverty. She struggled for all the, the rights and dignities of a woman. And coming from Jamaica, she was a, a neat package for all of us. Mm -hmm. And in her struggle and in her counsel, she, I'll never forget when Italy first invaded Ethiopia, my mother's indignity at that, uh, at the great sense of, 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 uh, of crisis that existed for her was to watch these people who were very much like her own people from the mountains of Jamaica. It's not by any stretch of the imagination that Rastafarians and, and, and the great tribute to the, to the Lion of Judah and Jah and all that comes from the uh, Abyssinian uh, tradition historically. And when Ethiopia was invaded by Italy, my mother was just absolutely furious, both the church for blessing Italian soldiers to go off and kill these more barefoot black people in Africa for no reason other than the, the lust of conquest, and she uh, said that she felt that that struggle was our struggle, that the, 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 the forces that were at work, crushing Ethiopia and crushing so much of Europe, and the world at large, the fascists, uh, Japan, Italy, and Germany, were the final vision of what would happen to a society that fulfilled its mission, and its mission was racist, and no place had a mission more racist defined and designed than did America. We created the, the apartheid system that helped South Africa create one of the most cruel societies in modern history. All of these things were in our basket. And therefore, anything that we could commit to that early on stemmed the tide for what was to come would be a, a, an engagement of honor. So for me, volunteering going into the Second World War was because I felt that what the uh, uh, Haley Selassie had to say, with what Dr. Du Bois had to say, with what so many had to say, who had interpreted that war, not just from the Eurocentric aspects of history, mm -hmm. but from the African and the developing world points of view of history. What the people in the Far East had to say about the French colonialists and who conquered them, and the Japanese, and what we had to say about Africa and the Caribbean, and, and what was going on in America. All these places were in this turmoil. And, uh, uh, to walk into this fray was very much a war to which I felt and was instructed that we belonged to. And all the people I respected mm -hmm. were part of that. When I came out of the war and expected this triumphant experience for the victors, we had defeated Hitler. We, uh, we had made, ensured that there would be no more room ever to discuss race superiority because we had killed that off. 
but only to come back to find that here in America, especially black servicemen, were being treated more cruelly than any place else in the world. What happened to Isaac Woodard and people who were black servicemen that came back and went south, who were murdered, who were lynched, who, were, who just disappeared and have never been heard from since. The cases were still reside in the books of our of many states and just missing missing people. Well, when you saw this as an ex-GI, looking at what was happening to us, we just felt uh, we have a struggle here. And uh, that struggle is to get it on. Uh, we had a, can acquiesce to the rules of the day, which was more, uh, more, more oppressive racist laws than we'd ever known before, or we can resist it, which meant to go into a place of rebellion. In that place of rebellion, in walks this young man, Martin Luther King, and while the boys and Dr. Uh, uh, Paul Robes and so many others were feisty, with, uh, ready to meet at the gates of violence to uh, thrash out this question, along came Dr. King, who showed me this device. And I must admit that in the beginning, what appealed to me was the brilliance of the strategy of nonviolence as a tactic against oppression. And then to see what happens when you really got into the philosophy of it and began to apply it, it became the, the supreme tool for us.